top. <laughs> if I'm not you saying the public will butcher us both. <laughs> no, I've had it with the Italian disease known as opera. And the, singer, <laughs> the singers that ruin it. You can trust the pig. But a singer will rob you blind and complain about it. That's why you need to follow the three-step rule in casting. Penny, penny. First, you hire fallen stars whose fees have shrunk with their range. The public will accept anything from a famous name. True enough. Then you hire some beginners. Tell them what a great opportunity you're giving them. And you pay them nothing. So the third who pays me? Naturally, these are the ones more blessed with the goods of the world than with talent. My dear Mr. Buff, what kinds of office could one possibly mount using such dishonest means? The very best. Authentic masterpieces that require more acting than singing. <laughs> what about scenery, costumes, lighting, the crowd scenes? Announce that you're going to modernize opera. <laughs> to achieve a sense of intimacy, you eliminate crowd scenes. <laughs> well, that would move things along. <laughs> to highlight hidden meanings and introspective conflicts, we dispense with scenery. <laughs> that the designer. And most of the stagehands. We eliminate costumes by playing in modern dress. <laughs> and to intensify realism and mood, we use very little lighting. <laughs> this is very desirable for most singers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I prefer to be a farmer. <laughs> Afford to be avant-garde. I know things look very dark, miss, but there's a death of dog just outside. Mr. Angel's waiting to see you. Mr. Angel? The banker? That stage-struck Lothario? He's hit on every soprano in town. What does he want? To see you, Sarge. I'll just show him in. And stop calling me Sarge. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> My dear director! What do you want, Mr. Angel? Right to the point. <laughs> I admire that in a woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, very nice. Are you aware that for some time I have maintained a close relationship with one of the lyric stage's brightest ornaments, Madame Golden Trill? The Madame Golden Trill? The Madame Golden Trill. The Madame Golden Trill. The Madame Golden Trill. <laughs> the Madame Golden Trill. <laughs> I heard she retired. Yes. And no, uh, I had hoped that the amenities I have been privileged to provide would have helped her forget the stage, but apparently she misses the excitement and is determined to make a whole series of farewell performances. With this company? Such a... Lovely and perceptive woman you are. Such a bold and piercing voice. Back off, angel face. You're kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, to be candid, my life of madam will not be worth living unless you engage her. The truth is that problems of repertoire. What Miss Scruples means is, Mr. Angel, is that the repertoire in which Madame Goldish would naturally wish to appear is currently beyond the resources of this company. But it would be worth a great deal to me. Seventy-five thousand dollars worth, to be precise. Seventy-five thousand dollars. I'll just bring you in, shall I? No. Time like the present. <laughs> Are you insane? I have never accepted money from a singer, and I don't intend to start now. Please don't be angry, Sarge. You deserve this. Seventy-five thousand dollars more than paid for Madame Golden Show's performances. <laughs> Which will sell out, and with what's left, you can produce obscure and artistic masterpieces that no one wants to hear. <laughs> but my principles, my ideals, my reputation, let me go to my farm before she arrives. Too late! Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
words fail me. <laughs> As usual, you are incomparable, my dear. What a voice, what a musician, what a heart. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fluff. Fluff. <laughs> Never, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Scruples, I'm prepared to take on all of the dramatic leads for a mere pittance. Of two thousand per week. <laughs> two thousand. Miss, it's Mr. Angel's money. But two thousand dollars. What Miss Scruples means is, is she can hardly think of money in connection with such art as yours. My dear director, the delicacy of your sentiments more than makes up for the modesty of your offer. Offer? I would be happy to appear as prima donna, assoluta of your distinguished company. You are a shrewd bargainer. I'll let you sort out the details. I find <coughs> business discussions <laughs> too sordid for words. <laughs> A windfall for you, Miss Scruples. Now, I wonder if I may ask another small favor. It so happens that I have a protege, a very young lady who has not yet appeared on stage, but who possesses the most remarkable aptitude. Do you mean to say that you're so fraternizing? Fraternizing? Uh, With choosing uh, uh, as a I would think one would be enough. A true patron of the arts? <laughs> I'm as fascinated with Madame Goldenstroh's past as I am with Miss Overpeel's future. And they both appear to have a distinct bearing on my immediate present. <laughs> my dear lady, you are the soul of tactful wit. Are you sure you're not a soprano? Quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well. Now that you've strengthened my position with Madame Goldenstroh, if you would do the same with me for Miss Silverpeel, I would be very, very happy. Why don't you just build a theater of your own? How happy! I'd be prepared to donate you for the hundred thousand dollars. Miss Scruples! Of course, I'd ask for a modest voice with regards to staging, casting, conducting, promotion, ticket sales, and the general running of the theater. Miss Scruples! <laughs> After all, the financiers know what the people want. I'll be right back with Miss Silverpeel. Don't take too long! What? 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 Sarge? Stop calling me that. Sorry, Sarge. Stop it. Sorry, miss. You must admit our prospects look considerably brighter. An hour ago we had no money at all. And now we know only $175,000. But plenty more where that came from. With a banker at the helm. Who will no doubt want to populate the season with showgirls and dancing bears. I like bears. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bluff, Miss Scruples, may I present Miss Silverpeel?
overwhelming desire to spread fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> of this company. Did you notice my staccato F? My sustained high E flat? <laughs> flat, yes. Oh, <laughs> never. How dare you? I am the Madame Golden Trim. Oh, my grandmother saw you once. <laughs> 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 Give them whatever they like. Give them whatever billing they want. Give them maids, furs, apartments, lap dogs, oil them a couple of new rock fanboys for them for all I care. <laughs> I resign and leave this mess to you, Mr. Bluff. But I want to see. And I want to slop hogs. <laughs> We all have our dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Angel, it's up to you. Well, I suppose I could manage it in my spare time. Spoken like a man truly ignorant of the arts. <laughs> 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 Not to worry. Bad impresarios cannot destroy the arts any more than quacks can destroy medicine, false prophets discredit religion, or charlatans ruin public office. <laughs> <laughs> I bid you all a good day and wish you all the success you so richly deserve. Old mixed scruples had a farm. E I E I O. No sopranos on that farm. E I E I O. <laughs> 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 oh, it seems I hold all the cards. I have full artistic and financial control. And I have access to all the sopranos I want. Uh, so, from now on, we will run this enterprise like a business. I can fire the men I choose, and if you don't behave, I may have to find other talent. Or a whole new audience. <laughs> 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 I can audition sopranos all day long. Oh, Angie. No need for that. <laughs> I suppose I could take on the parts that aren't leads. Whiffle Sally and top billing, of course. <laughs> I assume that no one would dream of asking me to sing minor roles. Uh, but I could be convinced to limiting myself to three farewell appearances. Mm. <laughs> Two. Mm. One. Mm. One then. <laughs> one this year. 3500 a week in this little cut. A co-quad <laughs> It is inspiring how putting things in a business perspective harmonizes the most discordant conflicts. <laughs> I propose a toast. Here's to the indispensable <laughs> maven of the arts. The impresario. Past. Present. And future. The impresario. <laughs> <laughs>